was an incredibly successful and um, fulfilling experience, that film, in lots of ways. It um, was like the worst introduction to the best kind of outcome, if you know what I mean, because it was so hard. Being in the bush, I mean, we were miles from anywhere. It was meant to be hot, it was raining. You know, um, you know, Stuart made everyone walk in for hours to get to the right bit of bush that he's found. I mean, it could have been the Waitakere's, but, you know, it was very difficult. And a lot of the crew kind of wanted to mutiny because they weren't happy with, the, you know, that whole scenario. But then Stuart, uh, Simon Raby, our DOP, was incredibly committed to the project and to Stuart and saying, you know, that this will be something that you'll be proud to have been part of in years to come. You know, stick with it. And sure enough, they all are. One of them was a joy. I mean, it was scary because it was uh, my first long form uh, drama. And it was shot again on Rangatoto Island, a difficult location on boats, difficult location. Katerina didn't believe that it could be done for the budget that we had, but we convinced her that we could. And then she buggered off to Paris, I think, with the top twins. So my executive producer was nowhere to be found. And it's, thank goodness I had Liz Defore to sort of hold my hand through it. But um, no, it was fantastic. The cast were amazing. It was a joyful, wonderful, you know, because the music, I mean, it was razzmatazz too. It was sort of like shooting a musical. Garth Maxwell, the writer-director, as well as cause Peter Wells was a writer on it, and another um, fabulous uh, gay writer, Rex Pilgrim. Rena had just done Once Were Warriors, and it felt like you know something quite amazing for her to do, and then was she going to be too big to come back and do a low budget, because it was low budget. I mean, it might have been seen big at the time, but it was you know under a million dollars. And again, we were you know, all over the show in terms of locations and you know, all sorts of different um, difficulties. But, I mean, Garth had all the experience of doing um, Xena, Fast Turnaround Television, and so he was very exacting in how he wanted to create and do this pro project, and it, yeah, it was, it was fantastic too. It was received well overseas, but at that point, it's you know, who knows whether it's the truth, but there was a real negativity towards New Zealand films in the um, papers at that stage. It was very hard to get a good response. I mean, all of the films about that time were getting sort of two stars or, you know, three stars, and it was, um, yeah, it was tough, and it was extremely tough for Garth because, you know, he'd put so much into it, and... You know, we all loved it so much, and you know, to get that kind of response was, yeah, tough. That was Peter's sort of autobiographical take on his own life, and Peter's got a very fixed, you know, well, he's a historian, so he loves, and he knows his own world very well, and is very interested in, in all of that. And um, so it was the story of his brother and his mother and his life. And his, I mean, the star of the show was his mother. I don't know if you've seen Pansy, but it's a, you know, it's a lovely personal take. With um, Pansy, it was a far more handmade and um, dainty is the wrong word, but very particular in the way that Peter is. You know, he's got a, a superb eye and, you know, just the... He, he enjoyed the kind of the DV aspect of it, which was, um, he, you know, so he had complete control over that whole process. It was lovely. It was a difficult film because you've got a child in the lead role and, you know, he is on the verge of that whole sexual awakening and all of the things that made him perfect for the role made it very difficult for us to work with him. You know, he was... You know, he didn't like rugby and he didn't like being on a bike. You know, first day of shoot, he was riding a bicycle and he fell off. And we hadn't thought to, to check whether or not he could ride a bicycle. And, you know, there was all sorts of, you know, tears and tantrums. And, you know, the first AD came to me and said, I don't think this is going to be a happening thing. And um, we'd spent months going all around New Zealand you know, every country school, you name it, trying to find this authentic boy. And um, there was nobody other than the two boys that Stuart actually found 
that he wanted to work with. So it was like, well, there's not someone we're on sort of redial that we can just call on down. Because we were in, you know, Omaha, right in central Otago, away from everywhere. So, no, it was a... Then it was meant to rain. I mean, it was meant to be a drought, and it rained. So a beautiful drought, but, you know, south, that central Otago became this sort of green beautiful looking place but not great for us so then it became we had to go and raise more money to do this whole digital intermediate thing to make it look brown. It was in a time in TVNZ where there was a real flux of leadership and so there was nobody really championing it, championing it for us. Um, other, Chris just was the head of drama and he moved and Kathleen Anderson you know came on at the very end but then she was new and I think Andrew Shaw came back into the mix so it was like it wasn't anybody's baby and even though it was doing very well in the ratings actually and you know did suddenly there was no one to love it for a second series and we by that stage I mean I think we'd written probably or Garth had conceived of the whole series but had you know thought of the second series that was a disappointment because it was a great cast and we had some you know I think I mean, the terrible thing is in this country, you know, you get an opportunity, you learn so much, and then, you know, you, you want to kind of, you know, use that experience to get on and do something better than what you did last time, and then there's this huge drought, and, you know, will you ever get a chance to do another drama series? Who knows? You know, it's just, you know, difficult. So it was very disappointing. So I was working with Fiona Samuel. I came into work one day and she put a piece of my heart on my desk and said, you know, would you read this? And that was a, um, a tally feature that she had always wanted to make and um, I loved it. I was adopted myself and just about everybody that I know is adopted. So it spoke to me and we put it into TV and said, and initially they, went, they didn't want it either and then I saw Andrew somewhere and mentioned it again, and he uh, had had an experience of adoption, and you know, he said, yes, let's go with it. And so we put it in, and New Zealand On Air, again, were a little bit, for some reason, I didn't believe in its authenticity or its timing, but it, Fiona made a few adjustments and it got made, and then again, it was, you know, very widely loved. Peace of my heart, I think it was one of the highest rating shows of the year for TV. Emily Barclay and Keisha Castle Hughes, you know, two of the best young actresses in the country. And initially, I, I think both Fiona and I thought Keisha Castle Hughes, you know, she's a movie star, you know, she's never going to be on our show. But you can only but ask, and we did. And, you know, both girls, Emily and Keisha, you know, loved the writing. And, um, and they became, you know, they were just so perfect for the roles. And they were, yeah, enjoyed every minute of it. Bliss was actually remarkably easy because it was probably the first time that we really had a budget, you know, that actually fitted the production. So often, as I say, you don't. And um, I mean, I'm sure Kirsty Cameron and um, Tracy will say that there wasn't enough money, but they did amazing jobs. And the costuming and the art department were incredible considering what they had to um, bring. But, it, they, yeah, there was money and it made it, it was a, a different process. It really was, from our point of view anyway, um, that being able to say yes to Fiona most of the time rather than no is a, is a joy for a producer. Basically, the way that Fiona um, cast it was to look at all her favourite New Zealand actors and even in the tiniest of little... Um, roles, she wanted their faces or their, and because she's an actor herself, she knows everybody and it was sort of like, everyone said yes and, you know, I mean, Kate Elliott, superb as Catherine and, I mean, she loved every minute of it and she gave us her everything, so it was amazing and Peter Elliott, um, no, it was incredible. Munton is a film that is so, is everything about Welby from he found the house, he went to that house and he dressed it and broke it down and built it so it was actually in his mind's eye, you know. Um, he dragged in stuff from his farm to that farm. He 
the clothing, the, you know, he lived in, that was so much his world. Um, as I said about Peter Wells, that he's, you know, so handmade and delicate. Welby's the opposite. He's, um, yeah, he physically brought that film together. And then in the post-production, those amazing drawings that he was able to bring to the, you know, in a completely different look to the film. Extraordinary, yeah. As a producer, you don't really look back much. You know, I was quite surprised just seeing that list there. I'm thinking, gosh, they seem so long ago. And, you know, you're so busy trying to think about the shows that you've got in, in production now. You know, I mean, I've been lucky. I just found out we've got funding for a feature film, which has been in development now for 10 years. And it's had to be reconceived and reconceived. You know, as budgets have got smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll be making that at the end of this year. But, yeah, it's always, as, you know, producing is about looking forward, not looking back. And so, yeah, uh, yeah that's what I constantly am doing. <laughs>